go to our access denied. Uh, that's why. Um, go to our uh, page on Canvas. Um, I don't know if you've been there yet, but if you have not, please, please do so. Uh, you will find the syllabus there. Did you get the syllabus that I sent to you guys? Yes. I got a syllabus, yeah. Um, so the syllabus here is the same. Um, it's the basics of the class. So this is um, an intro photography class, um, and it assumes no previous knowledge of photography, though some of you probably have at least a little knowledge of it. Um, so uh, again, I'll just go over the um, the syllabus and go from there. So welcome to exploring visual, vi visual expression. Using 35 millimeter photography as the medium, we will use natural forms, both human and otherwise, and man-made objects as subjects for artistic photographic expression. After covering the use of 35 millimeter cameras, lenses, and film, not that we're using much film these days, and other creative controls in photography, we will explore the basic principles of perception, light, color, composition, and visual awareness, and how these elements are used to make a successfully composed image. Through slides and videos, we will also look at the work of a number of photographers, and you are encouraged to employ your own aesthetic intellectual and emotional concerns as a basis for your photographic expressions. So more simply put, this, this class is about making successful images, um, how to compose an image that works. And it uses photography as the medium. It could use painting or drawing as well. Um, but it's a photo class. Um, so first we'll go over the technical stuff and that will take a little while, I'm afraid. Um, but the technical side of photography, the camera, lenses, um, how you use them, different types of cameras, different types of lenses, um, the settings, how you put them together, what they do. Um, We'll look at the work of other photographers and we'll look at your work um, and evaluate it, not critique it, but evaluate it and talk about why it's successful, what might help it to make it more successful. Um, and so you will need a digital camera of some sort. Um, it can be this type, which is a DSLR, a digital single lens reflex camera. It can be a much smaller camera. That's fine. I sent, uh, I sent you guys a list of some possibilities if, if you don't already have a camera. Um, of course, we all have phones. Uh, we all have phone cameras. But for the technical stuff, those won't work very well for this class. Um, and that is because although they take wonderful photographs, they're excellent cameras, you have no control over the, the basics. Um, and so something called the shutter, the aperture, the ISO rating, you cannot control on, on uh, phone cameras. And so for this class, um, you will need a camera that allows you some control. Uh, it doesn't have to be a big expensive camera. Um, many point and shoot cameras, the little ones, uh, not the really cheap $20 ones, but um, uh, the, lo the lower end models still, uh, still allow you to control the camera and still make excellent, excellent images. So you don't have to spend a fortune uh, to, to get a really 
good camera that makes really wonderful images. Um, but again, you do need a camera for the class. Um, our term, the quarter, is 12 weeks long with 11 weeks of instruction, which seems like a long time. But uh, for an art class, it goes pretty quickly. Um, so we try and squeeze everything in. And so you will need your cameras pretty, pretty soon. Not immediately, though it's nice to have them and shoot, uh, but, but pretty quickly. Okay. If you have questions about your camera, um, please feel free to ask. Bring it to, to my office hour. Uh, I have office hours on Wednesdays from 12.30 to 2.30. Um, except for today. Uh, so please, please come and, and ask questions. Uh, if you have specific questions about your camera, um, it would help if you have a manual. Uh, if you don't, that's fine. But I don't claim to know every single thing about every different uh, camera model, though um, I'll try and figure it out. But if you do have one, that would be great. Um, as you know, due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the measures put in place to slow its spread, this class, which normally would be taught in person on campus, uh, will be taught online. And so you need to have access to a computer with high-speed internet. Um, and of course, be familiar with using the internet and with Canvas, which I can't imagine that any of you are not at this point in history, um, but you do need you do need access to um, to the internet and to De Anza's Canvas for this course. Um, all the coursework is on Canvas, so the lectures, um, readings, videos are all on the Canvas site. And that's where you will upload your assignment images as well. <clears throat> so I uh, must be familiar with Can Canvas. Um, my office hours, again, will, will be Zoom on Zoom or via Zoom. Obviously, you have the invitation or you wouldn't be here. Uh, but it is also uh, listed on Canvas. Um, and I'll show you where that is in case you lose this one. Um, there is a, a text for the class entitled A Short Course in Photography Digital by London and Upton, the fourth edition. And I don't seem to have it in this room at the moment. Um, it is a good resource. Um, if you don't want to buy it, you can get by without it. Uh, it's not it's not cheap. It's cheaper than the big fat texts that are like $130. But new, this one is still between $50 and $60. Uh, so you can you can probably get your hands on an older version, on an older edition, um, which for the basics is fine because the basics of photography haven't really changed for over a hundred years. But digital photography obviously is different and that has really only come into fruition in the last 20 years. Um, so, uh, you know, a, an old, a 20 year old version of the text probably wouldn't be that useful for digital photography. Okay, so there will be assigned readings. They're not that long. They're not that detailed. The book is full of photographs. So um, even if it looks as if you're having to read a lot, you're actually not. OK, any questions thus far? Anybody? Uh, if for some inexplicable reason you need to drop the course, you don't like the course, you don't like me, or it just doesn't work out for whatever reason, uh, please do drop the class. Uh, when I notice that someone hasn't been around, I try and 
you know, uh, contact uh, whoever that is. That's, it's not as easy for me to figure that out or as figure it out as quickly when it's only online. Uh, but I'll try and find out what's going on and um, <clears throat> eventually may drop you. Uh, but I don't guarantee that I'll drop you. And it would be a, a shame to get a W, you know, for withdrawn or heaven forbid an F just because you didn't drop the class. So I hope you do not drop the class, of course. So the assignments for the class um, are here as follows. There are four main assignments and then a final exam. And then there's a written assignment, which is about a page long. Um, so the first two assignments, depth of field and motion, are technical assignments. And uh, oh, I see my cat has entered the, the fray. Um, and so it's for those uh, assignments that you really do need a camera that, that allows you control over the aperture and the shutter. Um, the second two assignments, you can certainly get by with a point and shoot, you know, an automatic camera, though I certainly would prefer, <coughs> excuse me, that you, uh, are able to to uh, use the controls to have a camera that that allows you control over it. Um, <clears throat> grading. So uh, the class is primarily, though not entirely, uh, assignment driven, and evaluation or grading will be based upon again a written exam, the timely submission of assignments, participation, and overall effort. Um, I do accept late assignments. Uh, points may be deducted depending on how late the assignment is, but uh, I will always accept a late assignment. So better late than never. Uh, and yeah, I understand that things happen. We have lives, uh, especially these days. Things are are difficult, are different and difficult. Uh, so if you have problems, please let me know. Let me know what's going on. And we can, I think, always always work stuff out. Okay. Um, the uh, projects and exam will be graded on a 1,000 point scale. A minimum grade, a minimum passing grade, pardon me, is a D minus or 60%. Uh, but the breakdown here is as follows, as you can see on the uh, syllabus. Um, the first three assignments are worth 100 points each, and the fourth final assignment is worth 200 points. The written assignment worth 200 points. The final exam worth 200 points. And participation is worth 100 points. Uh, how do I grade on participation when we're completely online. It's not as easy. Uh, but I look at how, how much you've been on, uh, on Canvas, pretty much. And of course, if you've done the assignments uh, and there will be a certain number of comments you have to make, you know, you have to look at other people's work and make comments. Uh, so assuming you have done those things, that part of the grade should be no problem. The final exam uh, may be taken during finals week and you have the entire week to do so. So from Monday, March 22nd through Friday, March 26th, um, it is a multiple question test and uh, you may take it twice and the, the better of the two grades is counted. Um, then the breakdown of what constitutes an A, B, C, D, or F. And obviously that is how much, you know, that the, that your work fulfills the assignment and uh, how much work and effort went into it and so on. Um, 
art classes, I think, are always a little more difficult to grade than, say, a math or science class because it's not quite as easy to quantify art, you know, and work. Uh, it's not as if there's a right answer or a wrong answer, except on the exam, of course. Um, but within those confines, uh, we do our, our best to, to grade fairly. Right? Um, so work for this class, the, the images that you submit need to have been made over the course of this quarter. So not before Monday, January 4th of this year. Um, so you may have some images that fulfill the assignment beautifully, but you made them three years ago. <clears throat> I don't want to see, well, I, don't, I shouldn't say that. I would love to see them, but I don't want you to turn them in for the assignment. I want you to make new work for the assignments. Um, can I tell? Yes, actually I can, because the information about each image is embedded into the file. Uh, so cameras, digital cameras make files instead of images on film. Uh, and the information about, about that image, where it was made, when, when it was made, the equipment that was used, the, the camera, the, sh the lens, the settings on the camera, all of those things are recorded uh, into what's called metadata. And the metadata is embedded in, in the file. Uh, the most common file type for, for digital images is the JPEG, uh, which you've probably seen. Um, but we'll go over the, uh, the different types of, of files and so on, and the benefits or the, the advantages and disadvantages of, of the different types. Um, but at any rate, again, that information is embedded in the file, so, so it's there. Can you disable it? Can you change it? Yes. Uh, if you take the time to do it, sure, you can change the metadata, but it takes longer to do that than to make an image. So <clears throat> I, don't, I don't see the point, really. Uh, I know that things being what they are, we can't all go any place and, and photograph. We're, we're limited. Uh, and so we would, you know, we just do our best. Right? Okay, <clears throat> this stuff, participation, I just talked about. Disruptive behavior is probably not an issue. <laughs> um, I've been teaching for 20 years, and I think I've had maybe three or four students over that period of time who, uh, whose conduct was not conducive to study. Um, I did have a fight break out once many years ago. But anyway, obviously, I don't think that applies to any of you. Uh, academic in integrity essentially means please don't cheat. Do your own work. <clears throat> um, yeah. Trouble for you. More importantly, trouble for me. Uh, just do your best. The student learning outcome, <clears throat> excuse me, is what you should be able to do upon completion of this course. And uh, that is to interpret and utilize the photographic medium as a means of communication. So to learn how to use the camera to its best advantage to make images that say and show what you want them to say and show. Uh, then there's information here, uh, the Student Success Center, if you need any tutoring or online help, uh, this is a good place to go. Uh, 
There's also uh, disabled student services. If you are in need of, of help from them, they're very good, very helpful. Both places are. And important dates. So obviously Monday was the first day of this quarter. Next Saturday is the last day to drop, uh, sorry, to add a class. Um, and the following Monday, the 18th, is the last day to drop a class for a full refund or credit. And no, no record of your ever having been here <laughs> will show up after that date, after January uh, 18th. Um, you can still drop the class but it will show up on your transcript as a W for withdrawal. Um, and the last day to drop the class and receive a W is Friday, February 26th, after which time you can't drop the class. Uh, so even if you want to, um, if I assume if there are really extenuating circumstances, they'll let you drop it, but um, theoretically anyway. You have to stay in after that date and do what you're supposed to or get an F. Um, next Monday, is that right? Next, not this coming, but the following. Monday is Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, so there's no class. Um, and then there's also the President's Day weekend, President's holiday. Uh, February 12th through 15th, so no classes then. And the quarter ends March 26th, so March 19th is the last day of regular classes, and then the following week is, is finals. Um, and uh, I welcome your questions and comments. I, I really do. Um, I do hope that that you'll come to my office hours and to the Zoom meetings that, that we have. And please feel free to contact me with questions, comments, concerns, issues um, that you may have, either, you know, through the, you know, during office hours or, uh, you know, if my office hours don't work for you, we can arrange another time to meet. Um, or via email, and I do my best to check my email at least once a day and to answer promptly. If you don't hear back from me, you know, in a relatively short period of time, you know, 12 hours or so, please feel free to email me again and give me a nudge in case I didn't get the, the email or something happened. Anyway, you won't be bothering me, so, so... Email away. Okay. Any questions? Anybody? Uh, what will uh, what would the written exam be like? So, like, what will we be expected to write? So the exam covers um, all of the technical stuff that we will be going over. Um, you know, the camera, lenses, settings, how, how we use them together. Um, and it is a multiple choice exam. I think there are 25 questions. And you have about an hour, no, you have two hours to take the exam. Uh, theoretically, it is not open book, but obviously I have no idea what you're doing <laughs> at home when you're taking the exam. And I assume that you have to know you have to at least know enough to know where to look in the book or your notes uh, to find that that information. So uh, it's I think it is not a difficult exam, but you do have to have you know done, done the stuff. Uh, so that's that's the exam. Um, okay, and there aren't any other type of written work. Any other what? Sorry. Any written work? Yes, there is written work. Uh, so there is um, there is a written assignment, and you, I have a a whole list of uh, videos that you can choose from. You need to watch two of them, and write about them. So about a paragraph or so for each one, for a total of about one page. 
Okay. So okay. it's not it's not a term paper or a, a research paper. Right. Uh, you know, uh, I just want to know that you've watched it, and I want to know what you thought of of what you saw. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, sorry. Let me get back to. Um, back to canvas. Can you all see this? Yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, so the home page uh, shows the syllabus and um, I should probably go to your view of it, right? Um, but any announcements uh, will be here. There's a to-do list. Now these, the assignments are not activated yet, so they're listed, but you cannot yet um, submit any images, which you probably wouldn't want to yet anyway, but there you have it. Uh, if there are notifications, they'll show up here. Um, the place that you will be spending the most time, I hope, uh, is in the modules. So if you look to the left, um, I'm sure you've all used Canvas, but anyway, to the left uh, are the modules. And there's a welcome and then resources. So some campus resources for you and counselor information if you need it. Um, the Zoom invitation here. And then these are the video links that I mentioned. Um, it's just a page with with links <laughs> that you can see here. And there are a fair number uh, to choose from. Uh, so I tried to put at least a little description of the type of photographer each, each one is. And then the different topics. So the basics, cameras, uh, the, the settings on the cameras, um, File types, as we mentioned, file types, sensors, ISO rating, then lenses, um, then how we control the amount of light entering the camera, the aperture and the shutter are the two mechanisms that we use to control how much light enters the camera, um, using them together because they don't, they, well, they technically function independently. We, you know, we use them together to make and exposure, uh, something called depth of field, how much of the frame is in focus from the foreground to the background, and color temperature and white balance, which will become clear later on, but there are different, different types of light. Uh, daylight out in the bright sun, shade, shadow, incandescent lights, the Edison style light bulbs, fluorescent lights, camera flash, and so on. Um, motion, photographing motion, stopping or freezing motion, showing motion. Um, and that is the second assignment. And then portraiture and self-portraiture. And I think that's, that's it, but that's a fair amount of information for uh, 11 weeks. Um, any questions? How did that happen? Oh, well. Anybody? All good? Yeah, OK. Um, when you're ready to, to load your assignments, uh, of course, you click on assignments. And the assignments show up, and you click on one. So. As you can see, assignment one is blocked and, you know, for a couple of weeks until we've gone over uh, what depth of field is um, and then have access to the assignment, you know, to this assignment and, and to the submission area. Okay. And the exam, or it says quizzes, that obviously is where you'll access the exam. And that is, I think, think about it. 
So get rid of that, get back to you. So all good? Any questions? How many of you are in need of a camera? You can use your thumbs up thing or just say, oh, I need a camera. Anybody? I have a question about my camera that I have currently. Mm -hmm. It's a Panasonic DMC FZ20. Mm -hmm. Looks like this. That should be great. Yeah. Can you can you show me the top of it for a moment? The controls on the top. Yep, perfect. That'll be great. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So that is that is. I think it's an SLR. Couldn't see it that well. Um, so SLRs are the kinds of cameras that we're used to seeing. You know, the the bigger cameras. Um, Ignore this big lens on it. I had I was using it for photographing the alignment of, of Jupiter and Saturn last month. Uh, and I discovered not that long ago, actually, that that sort of photography, photographing the moon and the stars, comes out beautifully with just a regular camera. Uh, who knew? Anyway, that's why I have a big lens on it. But uh, this type of camera is great. Um, it gives you lots of control over lots of stuff, but it's not, it's not necessary. You don't have to have a camera like I got this one at Costco, by the way, a few, some years ago. Um, so it's definitely not the newest and the best, um, but it takes great images. And so that's my takeaway for you is that you definitely do not have to have the newest and the best and the most expensive equipment to make fantastic images. Um, in the end, it's you. You're, you are making the images. The, the camera is a tool. Um, and so you can have the most expensive equipment in the world and make really terrible images. So that's what this class is for, hopefully, to, uh, to help you to make good images, you know, well composed images to look at, at images, yours and, and those of other people and, and talk about what, what goes into the making of a successful image. Uh, but anyway, you can have an older camera, um, a cheaper camera, that's fine. You know, that will be fine. Uh, There, I lost my train of thought, sorry. Uh, but anyway, again, you don't have to have the newest and most expensive to make wonderful images. If you don't have a camera, my advice is, my first piece of advice is to ask around, um, ask friends and relatives if they have a camera hanging around. Very often people upgrade. I'm sure you, you know people who have upgrade fever and must have the, the newest stuff, um, but often those people still have their older equipment around. Um, so do ask around if, if and see if someone you know has a camera that that uh, they'd be willing to let you use for this class. Um, after that, then then you know you may need to buy a camera if you can't if you if you can't borrow one. Uh, and that's what that list that I sent you is for. Um, so I list both s some more inexpensive, um, smaller cameras, and then the lower end um, digital SLRs. I didn't put in any that cost above $800, which I think is still pretty expensive. But um, the SLR cameras and other cameras certainly go go into the thousands and thousands of dollars, um, which I assume you don't want to spend for this one class. Um, so if you do have a problem getting a camera, let me know. Uh, and we'll try and figure something out. And at least I'll know that you're having trouble 
uh, you know, getting a camera and making images. Okay. So I guess that's about it. Um, yeah, please feel free to contact me anytime. And again, my office hours are Wednesdays, 1230 to 2.30. Uh, I really look forward to you coming and talking to me. Otherwise, I sit here kind of twiddling my thumbs and playing Sudoku for a couple of hours. <laughs> so uh, please come and talk to me and relieve me of my boredom. Okay, great to see you. Thank you for coming. Um, I will post this recording, uh, which you won't need, but the many people who didn't come may need. Uh, anyway, stay safe, stay healthy, be careful. Let us hope for peace, right? Okay. Take care. Bye now. <laughs>